Hello there. What's going on, everyone? Today, I'm going to be talking about what to buy first if you're on a budget for Star Wars X-Wing 2nd Edition's Separatist Faction. If you guys are looking to start out in this game and play the Separatists, you're in the right spot. This video is sponsored by Luxury Playstyle. Be sure to check out LuxuryPlaystyle.com. I'll have links in the description below. Uh, if you use my code VIP, you're going to save 15% on these amazing metal double-sided tokens. They come in a variety of finishes. They've got tokens for games for like X-Wing as well as a lot of other games. Also, while supplies last, if you purchase $35 or more, you're going to get a free Krabok token thrown in. It's got those lightsaber nunchucks on there, double-sided. You're going to be the, the coolest kid on your block with your very own Krabok token. Uh, but definitely check out LuxuryPlaystyle.com. Really, really nice tokens. I use them. I love them. And you're going to be the envy of everybody you play against if you've got them. All right, so we're we're talking about the separatists today. I, I do a lot of these buyers guides, and uh, and and this one I I really wanted to update this. I, I recently did a Republic one as well uh, for late 2020 uh, because there's been a lot of new stuff that come out for both the Republic and the separatists, and uh, and I feel like uh, you know I I'll update these all periodically as as new more and more and more new stuff comes out. And so the idea of this is to help new players who are looking to get into this game uh, you know, and uh, that are trying not to break the bank because these games aren't necessarily super cheap uh, to get into. And if you want to be able to play, I, I, I think you should go in with the standpoint of uh, trying to get into these games for the purposes of having fun rather than trying to get into these games with the purposes of destroying everybody. And so um, a lot of my guides focus on having a good time and uh, more of a casual, friendly, fun play style without being like the most competitive guide. So this is, you know, for the budget player. And I think if you are on a budget, you start off having fun. And at, once you've been playing the game for a while, if you do want to get competitive, there's definitely more ways to do that. Uh, one of the greatest ways to do that, too, is if you hop down into my Discord and become a part of the community, you can ask questions, get more advice, and dive deeper into the rabbit hole. Again, links for all of that stuff are going to be down below. But uh, with all of that said, uh, you can totally disregard a lot of this advice and always use the golden rule for my, all of my guides, which is if there is something that you have your heart set on or something that you really, really like, you should get that first. Absolutely get that first. If I, for example, say, oh, you know what, you should get, uh, you know, you should get this maybe fifth, but it's your favorite ship, then you should get it first because whatever you are really going to enjoy what's going to keep you playing is more important than my personal opinion on what you should buy first. So with all that being said, this is really my general opinion on separatists. So I do suggest anybody who's starting out with X-Wing 2nd Edition start out with a core set. Now, I recognize that this is not the mandatory way to go nowadays. Uh, the, everything that's in here is also available elsewhere, so you don't necessarily have to, or at least all of the stuff you need to play Separatists is available elsewhere. You won't necessarily need everything that comes in here, but to buy all of those things elsewhere is going to be more expensive. Uh, you know, getting a core set as your first purchase is a great way to learn the rules of the game. Play a two-player, like a small little, like a demo of the game, which would be like one X-Wing versus two TIE Fighters. And even though that may be, you know, different than what you wanted. Like if you wanted to play Separatists, you're like, but I don't want an X-Wing or TIE Fighter. I get that. Um, but it's still a way for you to learn the game. And it's always a good idea to kind of learn the basics before you jump into because... Let's face it, the uh, the Separatists are going to be a little bit more of an advanced faction. And honestly, if you're on a budget, they may not be the best faction for you to start out with. It might be better for you to start with the Rebels of the Empire, somebody who's a little bit more uh, akin to the roots of the game and where the game came from. Um, plus, if you start with a course that you're already going to have a heads up uh, on everybody else because you're going to have, uh, you know, three ships already. Well, two for the, for the uh, Empire and one for the Rebels. But regardless of the X-Wing and TIE Fighters that are in this set, you're also getting the rules. You're getting all the cardboard tokens. You're gonna you're gonna get a lot of obstacles. You're gonna be getting uh, 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 range templates, a uh, uh, range ruler rather, movement templates. You're gonna be getting dice. You're gonna get a damage deck. All of these different things that you're gonna need to play the game. And while those things are available elsewhere, uh, this is the you know the easiest way to get them all, get them all together. Uh, you're also gonna get a little box. You can probably keep your first fleet or two in. Uh, just an overall good good idea to buy the starter set. Um, and also, if you are a brand new player and you're looking to get into the game and you're on a budget, 
This is just the way to go. You can actually play this on your kitchen table with everything that's in here. You don't need anything else. There are other things you can eventually get, like a play mat and things like that, but you don't need that right away. Just to learn the game, this is where you start. Now, if you, you know, and, and this is this, this holds true for every faction, but if after playing this you decide, hey, I want to get into the Separatists now, that's when you start off uh, with Servants of Strife. Servants of Strife is kind of like a semi starter box for the Separatist faction. It's got that Belbelub in there, that's General Grievous's fighter, and it's also got two of the Vulture Droids that are going to come in this particular pack. Now, Vulture Droids are available as a separate pack as well, whereas this is the only place that you can get that Belbelub, which is, uh, again, like I said, Grievous's fighter. There's other fighters uh, or other pilots that, can, that you can have piloting it, but this one has a lot of upgrade cards in there it has a lot of things to get you uh you know to new players kind of caught up as far as all of those different upgrade cards that maybe other people would have gotten in the conversion kits for other other factions and things like that and it has a bunch of different pilot options so you're going to already have three ships all in one pack now this is about 40 bucks but it's still a pretty good value for the number of ships you're getting you may even want to at some point get a second one of these packs just because the value is pretty good on what you're getting here but then again not everybody can afford forty dollars, you know, per expansion. Now it's easily justifiable here because you have you're getting three different ships. Now X-wing is a points-based game, so when you're playing somebody, usually you're building a fleet of about two hundred points. And so one of the things that you know, moving forward in this list, that that I think is important is, you know, ships that can get you closer to two hundred points quicker because maybe that one ship even if it's a little more expensive if that can round out your whole list and you're done then you're good to go versus another ship that might be cheaper but maybe you need to buy like three or four of them well then it ends up not being so uh you know so cheap at, at the end of the day and, and and i feel like this servants of strife pack which is great because it's it is a little more expensive but giving you three ships kind of does a little bit of that and it also kind of showcases a little bit of the i think there's two different um, aspects to separatist playstyle in in general, uh, and then the first and foremost, the the big big thing about the separatists is droids. Uh, having droid ships, and you start off with the vulture droids and their networked calculations, and that they can kind of they have you know like a, a an internet uh, network between them, and they can share these these calculate tokens with each other, and 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 that's uh, that's a pretty good pretty good deal that they have, and it they really work well together. But on the other side, you have General Grievous and the Belbelub, right? And you and you have this this kind of like this individual uh, fighter. So you kind of have like like the Borg hive mind for the droid fighters, and then also you've got like these standalone um, rugged ace type characters, and that's kind of uh, like the, the aspects of uh, of the Separatists. Now, I am personally more a fan of those rugged ace type characters more so than the droids. Uh, for a couple of reasons. For one, I think they're a little more recognizable, and for two, they uh, can get your list all the way up to a you know a full 200 points a little bit quicker. So uh, starting off that with the next pick is going to be Django Fett's Slave One. Uh, now this one is a little cheaper. We have another ship on this list that is also another Ace Fighter uh, type, uh, you know, bigger ship. Now this is a little more expensive. This is this costs ten dollars more than the smaller ships. All right, then this, this is about a twenty nine MSRP, uh, whereas a, a lot of the smaller ships are only nineteen. But this is also going to it's a heavier weighted ship, and it's going to count for a lot more points in your list than most of those little small starfighters like vulture droids. And this will be a great way to round out a list. Plus. It's got Django Fett, it's got Boba Fett, it's got lots of really cool uh, cards and upgrades that come in here, and it's gonna have this. It's gonna be able to shoot forwards, it can shoot backwards, so it gets it brings some really cool firing arc stuff to your game. Plus, it's very recognizable. Uh, you know, um, how much did you guys see episode two, and how much of that movie was a starfighter battle of this guy, you know, versus Obi Wan Kenobi? I think that's a pretty big deal. This is one of the ships that really, that battle inspired the entire game of X-Wing. So I think this is a very important ship for the game. Uh, the, 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 the Fire Spray 31 that it is, that class of ship, that the Slave One was one of the first ships that ever came to X-Wing when it first came out in its first edition. And it's very, been, always been a very, very important ship for the game. So I think it's uh, I think it makes for an excellent early purchase if you 
uh, do like the uh, the hero type stuff. I mean, this may be uh, you know one of the ships that pulls people into the game. So I think it's so, it's so recognizable. It can be a very fun to fly ship. It's actually a very good ship to fly too. Um, you know, and and it has such uh, such great firing arcs with it. it. Can shoot forward, and if it if it flies right past you, no problem. Those guns can turn around and shoot right back at you. Really, really like this one. Um, next up is uh, Darth Maul's the the Sith Infiltrator. This one is a little more expensive, so I put it after the uh, the Slave One. This one is about forty bucks, also about the same price as the Servants of Strife pack, uh, and that's a whole lot. Whereas you're getting three ships there, and you're only getting one ship here, but this is Darth Maul, and uh, it's a super, super cool ship. Now, it might not be your first purchase when you're on a budget. Then again, if you're a fan of Darth Maul, or if you're a fan of this ship, uh, you can also get Dooku flying this ship also. Um, but, you know, like, it's uh, the cool factor alone might be enough to push you, push you over the edge and say, you know what, I'm going to chalk up the 40 bucks and buy this ship. Now... Granted, these are MSRP prices. You may be able to find these on sale cheaper, maybe even for Black Friday or something like that. A lot of times you're going to find it at least a little bit cheaper than this. But, uh, you know, I'm still I'm just basing things off of MSRP. But uh, this one is a little more expensive, so I can understand you putting this one back a little bit. But at the same time, it's also weighted very heavily. This one could end up being about half of your list, uh, so you wouldn't need as many other ships to fill out a competitive list. So that's certainly one of the advantages. So while it does cost a lot... As far as dollars or you know real money currency is concerned, uh, it it's, it's counts for so many points in the game that you won't need as many other things to fill out a competitive list. So that's worth considering. Um, but it's also it can cloak and it's also super fun to play. Um, and you know you've got the you've got some 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 uh, some Sith that come in this ship pack and can do some really fun and nasty things. So. I like this one a lot. It's a very, very fun ship to fly, and I think fun factor is important, so that's kind of why I put it up here. Now, moving on, if you're more interested in the droid kind of swarm stuff, you, well, you've got two vulture droids already, so then maybe you want to go with the uh, hyena bomber. This one is going to work very, very well with those vulture droids you already have. They've got the networked calculation uh, already built into them, so it's it's designed to work with the hyenas that you already, I'm sorry, the uh, vulture droids that you already have. Uh, so it's going to work very well with that. Plus it adds a little bit of something new because this is going to be more of your big heavy ordnance, you know, this this big bomber you know, and uh, your, you know, missile delivery system, all of that, you know, bigger, nastier stuff while maybe not being quite as, as fast. Think of like, think honestly, it's like a pretty close comparison of like TIE fighters to TIE bombers, right? They, they, they each kind of provide a different... Uh, a different face of the uh, of the puzzle, and that's kind of the same kind of synergy you have here with this hyena bomber versus the tie fighter. And, that, and this one actually has a variety of different ships that are all going to have uh, you know different loadout options too. This is actually quite a quite a bit of versatility in this particular pack. Very good option to get. Although you know it's kind of why I put the the swarmy droid stuff later is because these are kind of cheap in the and how they're weighted in the game now I think I think all the rest of the expansions after this are going to be uh, a little bit on the you know the smaller ship type expansions the $20 expansions so you're probably not going to be you know paying out the uh, paying an arm and a leg per expansion but you're going to probably want to get multiples of these a lot of this a lot of the stuff from, from this point forward is designed to work really well with with multiples so so that's that's something worth considering, and and, uh, and and that's kind of why I, I put them in the second part of this video, just because, you know, even if something is cheap, do you really want, I mean, I mean, do you really want to have to buy that many of them? So that's, you know, that's kind of where we're, where we're at on this particular one. Um, next up, the uh, HMP Droid Gunship. Now, this one is uh, a newer one, has a little bit of a different uh, play style, a little bit of a different... Uh, way that it kind of flies and, and it will still work pretty well with your other droids but uh but it also is going to be a little more expensive and and really really cool in some of the different types of mechanics that it can do it's got a really nice full frontal arc and it can do some advanced maneuvers so you know again probably not one of your very first purchases but once you're getting a little more comfortable now and you're looking at buying some additional things the HMP drun gunship also can do a side sloop, or our sorry, sorry, side slip, or basically where it kind of moves sideways instead of just moving straight. 
uh, or turning, you know, it can move straight, but yeah, it's just, it's got a lot of just extra little rules that come with this one that uh, allow it to fly a little differently and can definitely change up your uh, your game. So when you've like played multiple games now uh, with with your droids and you're kind of maybe maybe if it's starting to get stale, this one can bring some fresh new uh, mechanics into into all of that. Uh, also, the uh, Droid Tri Fighter is going to be a, a little bit more of an advanced, uh, you know, swarm ship. Still wanting to work with lots of other droids, but this one is going to be a little more powerful, and it's going to be flying a little bit more like an ace, like your high speed aces. Think of this as kind of like the equivalent to your Tie Interceptor. Uh, the tie, those type of ships usually do better once you're a little bit more experienced as a player. So you can maneuver them the right way and you can hopefully not crash and stuff and kind of line up, you know, line up the enemies, you know, right at the, uh, at the spot where you're not going to get shot, but you can still shoot them. Uh, you know, like as you get more experienced, ace style fighters become a lot better. And that's what this one is going to be doing for you. Um, and by the way, there's, you know, I put this one a little bit farther back, but the regular Vulture class droid fighter expansion is not a bad option either. Um, I put it lower on the list though because you've already got two. This particular expansion will be bringing you some new pilots though, so it is it does have value in that. Hey, you're going to probably want a lot of a lot of vulture droids, a lot of a lot of uh, droid ships if you are running a droid swarm, and this is going to give you some new pilot options and some new things that you can apply to the two that you already have. Uh, so there is definitely value in this one. Plus, it has a different paint job if you buy this particular one. This is more of the Trade Federation paint job rather than the separatist paint job so there is if that's something that appeals to you then there's something else some additional value added to that one but at the end of the day it's still basically the same ship that you've already got two of you're just getting new pilot options really in this one um and then last on my list is the nantex uh the nantex is a little different because it's it's just it, like everything about it is is different um, you know, it, it, it handles, you know, primarily, um, you know, using this tractor beam mechanic. And I think it's so different than the rest of the separatists. And, uh, and, and a lot of people like to run these in swarms that I put this last because I feel like this is um, a, a ship that you either come into the game, you know, you either come to this faction because you want to play a lot of Nantexes or maybe you want to steer clear of Nantexes. I, I'm not a big fan of them. I know that they've, they've been the subject of a lot of um, rage and criticisms as well as a lot of nerfs and, and retooling and readjustments over the years. And, you know, you know, in six months, this ship might, you know, be in a very different place. Who knows? It, it, it seems to go through a lot of changes between it gets nerfed to be too weak and then it slightly changes and now it's too strong and the swarms of them are, are too powerful and, uh, and a lot of stuff like that. And so, uh, you know, it's just a, it's just a very, it's in a very strange place, uh, in my opinion, and so uh, the fact that it's, it feels so different than everything else in this faction, um, I kind of put it at the back. Plus, it also falls under that whole swarmy thing where you, 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 a lot of people really like to run lots and lots of these, and I, and I don't want you to feel if you're a new player on a budget that you've got to buy like six of these uh, to be, you know, to be able to play. And so I just put this one kind of later on the list. But then again, maybe maybe you really like this. Maybe you really like the Geon Oceans and stuff. And if that's what drew you in, then the, maybe you get this, you know, first or second or something like that. Maybe you do. Um, but this is just that's just my opinion. Feel you're more than welcome to disagree. Um, now, once you've got all your ships, there's lots of other additional things you can get. There's a card packs uh, that give you bomb, all the different bomb types available, as well as obstacles and even um, you know upgrade packs in the uh, Aces High expansion. Although that one has a lot of uh, pilots for you know other factions, but there are a lot of card packs available that can help kind of get your collection kind of brought up to speed. Not as critical for brand new players starting out and learning the game, but they are available. Uh, you can get a list of the, those. Uh, if you go to Fantasy Flight Games under uh, their products and you can look at X-Wing, there's a list of neutral expansions. There's even Epic Play and Huge Ships and a lot more that you can go once you are down the rabbit hole. All right, guys, that's all I've got. I think that kind of concludes the list. If you liked this video, go ahead and let me know what you think down in the comment section. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, click that bell for alerts, subscribe, leave a comment. I've got giveaways running all the time. There's one right now for a $25 Amazon gift card. You just have to be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. It's as simple as that. 
And uh, we're also doing lots of other giveaways. We've got uh, details for those on crabock.com. If you click on the links down below, if you are watching on mobile, there's usually going to be a, like a down arrow somewhere over here. If you're on uh, like a computer, you're going to click see more down below there. Uh, all the links if you want to get to my Discord and join and ask questions, talk to other X-Wing players. If you wanted to go to my website and, and, and get more information there, uh, all of that stuff is down there as well. And uh, also is Patreon. Big thanks to my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing. And I couldn't do this without your continued support. So thank you all so much. And uh, Daylight Savings Time is terrible. It is the equivalent of a bag of farts. It needs to go away. Hopefully we can always remember this. And uh, <laughs> But beyond that, thank you so much. And as always, have a great day.